Hello. Um, welcome to my original book tag, my first book tag, The Edge of Reading. Um, before I start with all the questions of this book tag, I want to say I know I am asking a lot. I know this is not your regular book tag, and I know that um, it might be a bit of a pain in the ass to some of so to some booktubers, but not as a booktuber, but as uh, an a f like a as a follower of all of the booktube channels that I'm gonna tag. Please. Please, please, do this book tag. I would love to know what you think. Uh, it might be overly philosophical at times. It might be um, a bit uh, re redundant or even pedantic at some points. But it is, for me, a very interesting topic. Um, I couldn't think of anything more interesting, interesting for my first original book tag. And um, and I would I just would love to 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 to, ha to have started this conversation and 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 to see what you guys think. So rather than taking these as uh, these questions and and the premises that these questions have as sort of like um, um, truths or manipul manip manipulative ways of like uh, feeding my ideas into the questions. Um, just take it as this is a thought experiment, okay? Uh, you can play by the questions without um, necessarily agreeing with the premises. You can answer the questions negatively, disagree with the questions, question them. You can Frankenstein the book tag. Take if 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 the book tag is too long, or there are there is a question that's bothering you, or there is only one question that you like. Please take that question and run away with it. Any of the questions of the of this book tag, I would love to see them in your channels. I would love the, to see people speaking about them also in the comments. I just would really like to 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 see this conversation like ongoing uh, for as long as it can be taken because uh, it's a subject that fascinates me. And um, the subject is sort of like about reading about interpretation and about language and about which one comf comes first and about are they the same thing and if they are different why right so i'm gonna leave all the questions and all the people that stuck uh, down in the description and now i'm gonna get to the questions i haven't written any answers so like as, as i was writing and thinking the questions i was um i was just um thinking of my possible answers, but this, as all of my videos, is gonna be completely improvised, and I have no script or anything like that. So, for that same reason, even I am not committing myself to like a hundred percent of what I'm saying here. Okay, I just really want to think about these topics, think about uh, the possible answers to these questions, and see where those answers take me. But um, yeah, this is basically a subject that's being. Um, on my mind for a while now. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna get to the questions. I'm gonna go one by one through them. And uh, yeah, uh, please bear with me. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, the first is, um, give me your own definition of reading or use this one by yours truly. And this is the definition I have left, is reading is the act of interpretation of symbols that systematically put together in a certain sequence allow the reader to extract meaning from them in an active form of creation that can develop into complex narratives. Um, why this pompous uh, definition? Because it's the only one that I found that includes um, that, that I could think of that includes forms of um, of reading that I consider reading, like for example Braille. Like um, I don't know if Braille is the way is the English word, but basically the way blind people reads. If you see visually interpreting symbols on a page, then you are for example 
leaving outside people, uh, blind people who reads through touch, right? That's that's a that's that's the most vanilla uh, example I could think of. But there are many other things that you will see throughout this book tag that I consider reading that have nothing to do with books, but do uh, apply in this definition, which is also going to be in the description for whoever didn't understand my shit pronunciation and wants to check it and read it and criticize it, please criticize everything of this. I just want like, please interact with these questions because I would love to know what you think about them once again. So next question. Uh, so fr from, from that definition, uh, given, given your chosen definition, are reading and interpretation the same thing? If not, what do they, in what do they differ? So are reading and interpretation the same thing? And if not, in what do they differ? Um, I think the, the, the first answer that comes to mind is um, that reading is a form of inter interpretation, but that interpretation can be other things as well. However, I am going to answer that yes, reading and interpretation are in fact the same thing. And um, we, on we only like conventionally are used to refer to reading when that interpretation is done in a page in the form of words. But um, but I think it can be taken further than that. And there are certain disciplines that have nothing to do with reading. They use the word reading. For example, for rock climbing, um, uh, when you are about to climb a wall, the, the thing that you do before watching the, the boulders on, the, on, on that wall is called reading the wall. And, and it's basically interpreting symbols on a surface that is not uh, a book. I, I consider that reading. Um, so I'm gonna go with reading and interpretation are in fact the same thing. Although I, I, I imagine that most of you will go for the previous one, answer that I gave. Um, okay, so are there any practices that you consider reading but that would fit, uh, but that would fit that definition but that would not fit that definition or other definitions of reading. So any practices that you consider reading that would fit that would not fit that definition or some other definitions of reading. Um, for in my case, no, because I consider reading interpretation the same thing, which leaves and this is the reason why I chose not to differentiate them, because it could make me have to leave out uh, certain forms of um, of uh, symbol decipher deciphering that uh, that I consider reading. Um, so that is my answer. Um, there are no practices left outside of my own definition. But if there are on your case, tell me, please, I'd love to know. Is there an ideal reading experience for you? What is it? Is there a book that represents it? There's a lot of philosophy behind these questions, but I'm not going to get into that philosophy because the point is not the point of this book tag. But yeah, is there an ideal reading experience? And if there is such a thing as an ideal reading experience, what is it? Is there a book that represents it for you? My answer is there is no ideal reading experience um, for me. And therefore, uh, there is no such a thing as the book that represents reading. There are many different forms of reading. They're very diverse in between each other. And um, yeah, uh, that's my answer. Following from that question, if there is such a thing as an ideal reading experience, it follows that there is a scale of value to reading. What is at the bottom? And um, to say that there is no an ideal reading experience for me is not to say that there is not an ideal reading experience in the terms of the quality of the literature that you might be reading. I, I don't think that uh, uh, when it comes to reading or in, when it comes to any discipline that involves reading, there isn't such a thing as good and bad. Um, in, in my own subjective experience, there isn't. There is only just that which I like and that which I don't like, and, some, and, and, and it's just not systematic. It's, it, it isn't, so I couldn't be able to like create a scale and be like, these kind of things are up there and these kinds of things are down there, because suddenly this topic that I don't really like suddenly makes, uh, I find a, a book from that topic that makes it all the way to the top. However, if we got into like the quality of uh, of writing and everything, I'd say that those things that those sequence of symbols uh, or words that uh, whose meaning which uh, whose meaning is created in a less um, beautiful way and with less clarity would be at the bottom. Um, 
so that for example would mean that something uh, such as like um, um, pretty much any book from Derrida, <laughs> uh, the French philosopher, would be at the bottom. Um, but again, uh, I'm not gonna get into that objective aspect. I think some of you has have much more to say than me. So I'm just gonna say like, there's no such a thing as a scale of reading value of value in terms of reading, uh, at least to me. Um. Is there a book on that bottom that you love or enjoy as much as those on the top? Um, once again, uh, I just didn't play into those questions. Some of you might, that's why they are here. But um, of course there are books that, given my sort of like um, previous uh, conditions to what a good book is or a bad book is in terms of like are the words on the page making sense are they needed and uh, are they clear and are they laid out in a um, beautiful uh, cohesive way so um, anything that gets away from that generally uh, would be a, a bad book, and in that sense, a book that would be bad by this definition is Antiripus by Deleuze. Um, I'm mainly picking philosophers here because it's um, something of what I read most, but uh, that would be a case of, uh, of, um, of a form of, um, of writing that I would put at the bottom, given the previous definition I gave and, and, and the previous conditions I've made. And however, Antiripus for me is one of my favorite books. So, there you are. Is reading as the art of associating symbols and creating meaning out of them a predecessor of language? Or does it come after as a sequence of those languages, as a consequence of those languages? So, is reading as the art of associating symbols and creating meaning out of them a predecessor of language? Or does it come after as a consequence of those languages? Um... I think the intuitive answer might be to say that languages come before and through and after, sort of like after we have really we develop the capacity to use those um, uh, cohesive symbols uh, to communicate coherently and systematically, we find out about reading as a form to like leave those symbols um, in a, in any surface and be able to sort of like extract them through time as well and not just communicate through space uh, however I'm, I'm i'm gonna say that reading precedes language because reading for me is how we learned how, how language came to be because since i am considering um since i am considering language seeing as i am considering reading as as a much broader thing than what we do when we open a book and read those symbols on a page as the, I gave the example of rock climbing, I could give many other examples that animals, the way animals communicate, the way they read their gestures and their fa facial expressions or expressions in general, that for me is a form of reading as well. I know that um, when I'm, so when I'm saying reading, it is, I'm saying reading as a synonym, synonym of interpretation. I'm saying that they are the same thing. And, um, and in that in and in that uh, case, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, and in the, and in that case, basically, what I'm saying is that long before we were able to communicate with each other, we had to be able to read each other and to read the, our environments. Through reading our, our environments, we developed uh, cognitively to a degree in which we were able to not only create meaning by reading the those symbols outside of of us, but create our own. Uh, so that's that's my answer, more or less. Um, yeah. So next question. Is everything that can be read, so everything that has meaning, a language? Yes. I'm not gonna uh, spawn into that. I think my answer is yes. 
and uh, almost about to finish now mention a few languages that defy the conventional conception of what a language is could a, could a book be written in any of those languages so some languages that define that, that conventional conception of what a language is are um, as I said before um, in terms of um, the climbing culture you you could there's like a whole spoken and non-spoken language there's the spoken language of like the sort of colloquial um, words and expressions that they use but also the the marks the boulders that you can see on the walls so you can you can look at that world and extract meaning so there is a language a non-spoken language that you can see on the rocks that you are about to climb surfing is another example of that and sailing as well like in general people on the ocean learns to read the ocean for whatever their purpose is or whatever their sort of like discipline or area of uh, contact with the ocean is diving as well like you you learn to read the environment and each of those forms of uh, reading the environment are reading a uh, braille would be another another example of that and i think i wrote a couple more here um uh, yeah navigation charts for example reading charts reading maps that is reading and uh, it doesn't involve words you just look at the map at the chart look at the depths look at the buoys looking at looking look at the like at the tides and the direction that the tides are going at the different symbols that are left on that page that's a that's a good one um navigation charts are somewhere in between the more radical examples that i have gave or reading and those that you are you might be more familiar with and i definitely consider them reading um yeah as i said like the facial expressions uh, um in terms of uh, animals any sounds that they emit all of those things are languages all of those things involve reading um and um uh, could a book be written in any of those languages in some of them yes so for example um um, something I have never studied, but I loved, I'd love to study at some point in my life, is music theory. I haven't studied music theory, I haven't studied maths to the degree of like understanding them as fluently as some people understand a language. But I'm sure that those are two examples of, of, of languages that could fill a book from beginning to end, create a narrative, and there is people out there that is capable of reading those books with not a single word in them. Uh, that still have a lot of meaning and provide uh, many of the satisfactions that we can get from a book. Similarly, uh, I can't imagine myself like opening a book with only images of uh, waves or climbing walls, or maybe like a climbing route that's like a cut into different pages with different images of, of, the, of the climbing route and I am reading sort of like the route. Uh, without involving any images, yeah. So those are examples that uh, of books that could be written in some of those languages. Um, which is not to say could the experience of um, of interacting with those mediums be uh, transported through a book. So when I don't know uh, when you when I when I read Anna Karenina. To a degree, I was understanding the situation of Anna in 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 that uh, 19th century Russia, um, but um, I was not experiencing what she would have experienced in in a reality, right? Because it, it's it's not the same thing. So it's it's, it's not the same thing to read a surf book or a music book as to listen to music or surf. Uh, so I'm not saying that like, for example, you could write a book. Um, with um, like re recording different gestures of animals of their own of a specific species with their own specific language, that you would be capturing what it is like. But you would be transporting their language into a book. So I think that yes, books could be written about many different subjects that we haven't even ex started to 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 think about and explore. And I think it would be very interesting if if someone did. Um, always with that knowledge. With the knowledge that it's not the same thing 
because uh, uh, a problem with those, some of these questions and with um, some of our approaches humans to everything that is non-representable um, is that we take the representation as truth, as truth value, um, as face value, and uh, and run away with it, and because we can read some of the gestures in, like, because you can read some of the gestures in, in in your dog, or in or in the ocean, right? Some of the things that happen there automatically you think that you understand the the full content and the full experience of being that and doing that. Um, and I think that's just um, it's, it's one of the um, defects of our rational nature but um, but also if it's taken with that awareness if we read into all of these things without or into like our environments without um, taking for granted that our understanding is uh, not only intellectual but also empirical because it's not in most cases, um, then 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 there is a lot to to do in that that is of value and and positive. And finally, if you could boundlessly read, understand, or understand, basically both. If you could boundlessly read, understand the meaning in those languages, in one of those languages, which one would it be and why? This means if you could understand, you know, anything out there in one of those languages that is foreign to you, if you could understand it perfectly, which one would you choose? You know, like uh, if you could understand music, for example, just like everything that has to do with music, music theory or maths or dog's language or whale's language, what would you choose? If it was only one, I would probably choose um, whale's language. I don't know of which specific kind of whale, but I would definitely choose some kind of whale uh, or uh, dolphins. I see animal in general. I'm a, I, I, most of my life I spent scuba diving. I'm a scuba diving instructor and I've uh, interacted with many different uh, sea animals in my life. And um, the gap is huge. If you think you have a if you think there is a gap between you and uh, and your pets, your mammal, your mammals, the ones that you live with, it's it's in, like the gap between you and a fish is incredible. But that doesn't mean that they are less um, intellectually developed or that they have a less rich inner cosmology uh, or that their feelings are less uh, profound. No, it only means that they are more alien more inaccessible and I just I'm fascinated by them and I, I think I think a, I think a, just a blue whale or a sperm whale maybe not a sperm whale maybe I, I think I prefer the ones that are um, yeah different topic and uh, I think some kind of whale would be my choice if this question was referring only to human languages then I would probably choose music I'd love to just like understand music theory perfectly. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> with that, on that note, um, well, it says why. I mean, does that really need an answer? Why? Because our worlds are so much smaller than we think they are. And every time we learn a language, now with the awareness, the the third awareness that when I say language, I don't just mean language, I mean language. <laughs> um, so every time we learn a language, we, we we realize of how small our worlds are, but also we expand them. We expand those horizons that I was talking about on my newbie video, my newbie tag video. And uh, and if learning a human language does that like to like it, it doubles your capacity to like understand your your world i cannot imagine how much learning and becoming fluent in a non-human animal language would do to me and i i would love to experience it with all the pain and all the 
downsides that uh, that would have because every time uh, and this those of you who who speak other languages um will know um every time that uh, you learn a language you for at least that's how that's my, my experience you exile yourself a bit more and more from from your idea of of belonging to the previous one and uh, and find yourself more in between the margins of all of those languages uh, and uh, exciting myself from my species in order to approach a different an alien species is not just uh it's not just um uh, an experience that would bring joy. There is uh, there is many challenges onto something like that, but I would definitely that would be my choice, um, and I would take it to its late furthest consequences. And I, I I think yes, that would be amazing. That would be fascinating. And so yeah, this is my the edge of reading book tag. I guess the title now will make much more sense to you. I have tagged all the booktubers that I like. So it's many people that stuck over there. If you go to this moment of the video, thank you so much. Uh, of all the videos I have made, this one is the one that I'm most interested on seeing people, uh, like getting some interaction from, like seeing people's ideas. And and uh, it's pretty much also like encapsulates the reason of, of why I got into this in the first place. Uh, into within to this, I don't mean to YouTube. I mean into the BookTube community, which is because there's a number of people here who I find very interesting, and I uh, and I thought that this would be a more active way of starting conversations that haven't yet been started, and that I just would love you to see like taking part in them, engaging. Uh, so please let me know. Uh, if, if you're not gonna make a video at least let me know in the comments or or send me I don't know an email if you don't wanna say tell me publicly the answer to one of those questions or why you didn't like the book tag or whatever um, I'll leave my email in the description but um, yes I mean thank you have a nice day